okay? Hey everyone, and good morning. It's Tuesday at 9.30, and we're gonna do our Back to Basics with Dixie Bell part two. Um, if you missed part one, we're working on this just cute little occasional table. And in the first video, we, very first thing we did is we cleaned with white lightning with two tablespoons and a gallon of hot water. We took a t-shirt rag and wiped the whole piece super clean. And then we took clear, clean water in a rag and wiped that down. Then we took farmhouse green and did a thin first coat. So that's kind of where we're at now. It's nice and dry. Now this piece has had a week to dry, but if you were doing it at home, once you got to the bottom and the top was dry, you could just keep going. You don't need to give it that week in between. It was just um, so we could get back to you guys this week. Um, now, as we painted, we kept with some straight brush strokes. We were going this way with them and we kind of, we kept them as deliberate as we could. Now, when we came back today and it was dry, I do see that we have a little bit right here of like a brown bleed through. It's not bright red, it's nothing crazy, um, but it is there. I'm gonna make this piece very farmhousey. That's my goal and intention. So this and a little bit right here does not bother me. However, if you ever get to this point with a piece and realize that it's bleeding through and that won't work at all with the look you're going for, Dixie Bell does have a product called Boss. which blocks odors, stains, and stops bleed through. Comes in white and clear. This would work miracles. So as soon as you see bleed through, um, you can go ahead and paint this on and it will go ahead and stop any of the bleed throughs. My phone never rings in the morning unless we're doing live videos. Everybody's so. saying hi. Hey everyone. Happy Tuesday. Oh, you, oh. you know what? Let me go try to stop that super quick. Sorry, guys. Oh, they hung up anyway. That worked out. So, don't forget to remind them about commenting and sharing. Yes! Please comment. Please share because we have our fun wheel of prizes for Dixie Bell. So, every day at the end of the video, Sarah gets to pick someone who shared and commented, and they get to win a prize, which is super, super fun. So does anyone have any questions about where we are so far, or about Boss, or um, anything like that before we get started today? Nope, no questions? All right, let's just get to it. Just a lot of highs and good mornings. Good morning! So, my idea for the table is to do it um, pretty country and farmhouse, and then I thought that next week we would do this pretty stencil on top, or at some point with the coffee bean, and we're going to do some clear wax and some dark wax to use the waxing for shading over the next couple weeks. So once this is finished, it'll have... Um, like some dark brown shading tones to it and then a brown stencil so that's the goal but now to get to the goal let's go ahead and put kind of a thin second coat we're gonna take it right back off so I don't want this coat to be very thick either if we wanted it super crazy rustic honestly this would be enough and we could just sand but I want it I don't know, a little bit more color. So today, I'm using one of my Dixie Bell brushes. And I'm going to stay with the same grain of painting that I did in the first video. Brooke says it's too early for paint fumes. <laughs> There's no paint fumes! <laughs> this is non-toxic. 
and no VOCs. There's not a single fume going on right now. She said, just kidding, you're doing a great job. Thanks. <laughs> Laura loves that combination. Betty Hilt says good morning. Good morning, Betty. Yeah, I think it's going to be pretty to have this with the coffee bean. So, Judy, can't wait to check out your store. Oh, come visit. We love visitors. So if you guys can see, look, I barely put much paint on this at all. I don't like to goober out my paintbrushes because then it goes on too thick and that's when you get runs and really weird marks in your pieces. So, I'm kind of correcting stuff as I go so we don't have to correct it later. But as you can see with a quick thin second coat, the difference. I just clean up whatever lines I have while we're wet. We don't want to overbrush. It's starting to dry already, which is amazing. Has anyone used the new farmhouse green yet? Lisa says it's very pretty. It's so pretty. I love greens. This brush, um, I've used it so much that it's now slanted to how I paint, which is amazing. It's my very own personal brush. I'm actually a big fan of the fact that I've worked it that way. It fits like those memory foam shoes. Did everyone have a good 4th of July? We had a crazy week. We decided to give my kids their big boy rooms and purge the house because they were at grandma and grandpa's. So we're going through the process of getting rid of all those crazy little toys that just dunk up your house that they don't ever play with but love forever. Laura asked what kind, but that's all she said, so I'm not sure, Laura, if you want to specify what kind of whatever you're talking about. <laughs> Kim said she just got the farmhouse green and she's going to use it on a bench. Oh, I lo we love benches. We paint a bunch of them. My husband actually takes um, beds and turns them into benches for us. I'm just turning the table to make sure that we got all the sides of it. We often turn our pieces to make sure that we hit every spot. Worst thing is finishing a piece and then realizing that you forgot a whole area, right? Oh, uh, Laura said, what kind of brush? Brush, this is the Dixie Belle medium size brush. It's a natural haired brush. Betty says, have fun with the toy removal project. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Um, I was really worried about my little guy because my older one was very gung-ho for a bedroom, so he actually gave me permission to do it while he wasn't home. Um, and my little guy is like a hoarder, and I thought he was going to have like the biggest fit ever. And he, so I finished the big one's room, and he came home, and when he saw his brother's room was so cool, he actually asked me to go get him garbage bags. And last night he packed up five garbage bags of stuff for his big boy room. So, bribery works, guys. Kids will get rid of stuff if they think they're going to get something cooler.
So we're just going around. Again, I'm not putting too much paint on. I'm still working with probably my second dip for this whole spindle. Because I don't want it super thick because we're just going to go right back and take it off. So no sense in making extra work for yourself. I just wanted it to be a little bit more opaque than it was. Keep turning the table and working the spindles down to make sure we got all of them. or marks or weird things. Kim said this table would be cute with a transfer. Oh, we could do transfer. I have another cute table, so we'll do transfers at some point. I'm trying to think of which little transfers I have. I have the flower one. That could be cute. Maybe we'll switch up. Who knows? That's a good idea. But I did grab some little tables so that once we're done with this table, we can continue with the series. We just put this down for you guys, but in reality, I just paint my carpets. It's so bad. Oh. Yep, every day we paint the carpets. <laughs> Betty said you must have done a great job that his brother liked his room enough. Thanks. Um, it was simple but effective. Teresa's using farmhouse green on, cab on a cabinet. Oh, and a kitchen? That would be so pretty. Everywhere. It doesn't have to be perfect. Again, we're going to take it right off. Betty says she usually starts from the bottom and then goes up to the top. That could make sense. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I start at the top. I think because I'm sitting in a chair for you guys today, that probably is why I started from the top. I always start from the top too. I don't know why. It's just a habit that I got into. And do you? Yeah. You know what? I honestly don't know that I ever paid attention to where I start projects from. Betty, now I'm gonna start paying attention so that I can tell you guys next week where I typically <laughs> start, and if this one was a fluke or not. I might start from the top, I think, to avoid the spindles. And how about chairs, y'all? Oh my goodness. They look nice and cute and simple, but holy moly. There's like eight million crevices in those bad boys. Betty says it just looks easier the other way. <laughs> and I, I agree, but it's early and we get messy. We have fun. We are just about done. Laura says she usually does top the bottom too. <laughs> Glad to know we're not alone. <laughs> but see, this just proves that there's absolutely no right or wrong way to do most of this. I know there's always videos that show how different retailers do it or different bloggers or any of us but in reality it's just what you're comfortable with and what works best for you because you're the one doing it so we are just about dry um as you can see i am very messy today Kim says she has problems with the hairs coming out of the brushes. 
Oh, so, of these? And she's asking if... How to not do that? Not necessarily how. She said, I have problems with the hairs coming out of the brushes mm -hmm. I use. Does that brush not lose hair? It, some come out, um, but the one thing I can say is that we soak them before we using, use them initially because they're natural hair. And then you kind of work them over good without painting them for the first time. You'll lose some of that shedding first. And then every now and then as I go, like there's one loose one here, I just pluck it out. Um, but the nice thing is, is I found with natural brushes, they kind of, like I said, will eventually conform to the way we work and become like a memory foam brush, which is amazing. Cause then, you know, it goes with your natural brush habit. So I don't know if that was helpful or not, but that's what we do with the natural brushes. Um, water, soak, scrub 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 on like a um, cloth or a towel or just something bang out the loose hairs paint away it'll become your favorite brush Ding. lisa says good morning from paintiques hey lisa okay guys we have like two more seconds and then we're dry which is amazing we did this whole table and we're almost dry in what, like 10 minutes? And don't forget to share and let us know. Yes, thank you, Sarah, on the sharing and letting us know. Commenting, questioning, where are you guys from? What are you doing? Talk to us. It's fun while it dries. And then we're going to give away some goodies. Let's talk sandpaper, because that's the next step. So, this is 220. To sandpaper numbers, the higher the number, the finer the sand. The lower the number, the more grit, so the more it's going to come off. Um, so if you go and grab an 80 grit sandpaper, <clears throat> you're going to take off probably way more than you want. If you grab a 500 sandpaper, you're probably going to be sanding for the rest of your life and you're going to hate your life. Well, at least that five minutes of it. So I use 220. It's right down the road in the middle. Um, it's a little heavier of a grit because I don't want to be here forever. Sometimes you can use like a 320 is all right. We use that often too. If we don't want to take a lot off, if we just want it soft. Um, <coughs> sorry guys. Um, I'm just going to take a sip of coffee because Okay, so we sand everything no matter what, whether we want it to have a solid look or a farmhouse look. It's my favorite part. I feel like sanding really helps the piece feel finished. It gives, this, this paint gets very soft, very smooth, very finished feeling once it's sanded. It's a step we never, ever, ever, ever skip. Um, I find it to be very important in letting a piece go home very finished um, just finished I mean you can't we sell stuff obviously we're a store we finish stuff for customers and I just feel like if you were to paint something and then slap a sealer on it it that's not done so girls do yourself a favor give it a good sand over um, this is dry so we're gonna start sanding. I rip my sandpaper into little squares and then I fold over and it gives me more control. You can use sandpaper blocks. Um, you can use an actual handled sander. You can do it this way. Again, it's all personal preference. I feel like this gives me more control of what I'm feeling underneath and what I'm doing. But again, it's completely up to what makes you comfortable. I apologize ahead of time for the noise. Some love it, some hate it, but it can't be avoided. Um, I'm gonna let it just hit the high point and the edges. I'm gonna kind of go over the edge a little bit more than that, and we're just gonna stand. And all of the natural stuff that was there when we started that I said, Hey guys, I'm not going to sand this piece because this rough stuff is going to be cool. It's already starting to be cool. So, 
So, this is all of that ick that I said we could have sanded and made smooth in the beginning, but why? Because it's gonna add character, and there's all the character that I was hoping for. Betty loves your pants. <laughs> oh, thanks, they're my favorite. I got them at a surf shop years ago, and they had four colors, and I should have got all of them, and I didn't. We got a lot of shares, so thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank you. We totally appreciate it. So again, you can start to see all of this stuff coming through and I wish there was some way you guys could feel what I'm feeling because this side right here is super smooth it's very soft like there's all of these details but it literally feels so 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 smooth and right here it's very bumpy so this is what you want to give your customers a finished soft piece where you can't see all of your paint or make it feel like that's not awesome. Don't do that. Jennifer says, I haven't tried Dixie Bell paints before. Can you use this on outdoor pieces? Also, how about use on metal pieces? Yes and yes. Um, there hasn't been much. I haven't been able to paint. You can paint glass. You can paint metal. You can paint outdoor. You can paint indoor. You can paint furniture. Um, there's a whole patina line. Like, there's so, so much you can do. Um, with metal pieces, they're slick stick that you might want to put down first just to help the paint grab. And for outdoor furniture, I use Gator Hide as a top coat and it helps keep. So let's just kind of continue to get in there and get some of all of this goodness to kind of pop back out. Now, sanding, you can do as much or as little as you want for your piece. But I would always do some. It's not a requirement, it's just my personal preference. I find that if you kind of go on an angle, you get a little bit more. This works out really good when you're like annoyed with your kids. Just put it all right into the sanding. I should have like the best arms ever. I just want to get this spot. It's a little too. So this is why I did a second coat. I wanted this to come through, but I wanted the paint to be more solid in the other spots. And that's how cool our top came out since we left all that naturally old graining in it and did not sand it first. I never ever sand first. Go around and get the Laura made a great comment. She said the Dixie Bell community is the best, so full of knowledge and support. Oh, isn't it great? It's like one big family, and I'm not not kidding about that. Um, my fellow retailers, so many of them have become personal friends and personal sources of encouragement and information over the years. Even Suzanne and Terry themselves are absolutely incredible about jumping on the phone with us and helping us and giving us all the resources we need to be able to have everything we need to help y'all. It's really an amazing company to work with. Okay. Thank you, Betty, for inviting people. 
I'm glad they're watching. I'm glad I grabbed two. All right, I'm just gonna take a rag and quick get all my sanding dust off. So you guys can see all the different shades and tones and without all the sanding goop. And you wanna leave the sanding stuff on because then it's just gonna get in your top coat. So all you have to do is wipe it off though. It's just fine dust, it'll come right off. The best is when you're sanding forever all day and your whole face turns like the color of <laughs> the paint that you're using. <laughs> That's really, really exceptionally awesome, especially when it's a really bright color and then a customer walks in and they're talking <laughs> to you and you have no idea that your entire face is like amethyst purple. It's awesome. So now we're gonna do the spindles. You can either go this way, but I just wanna hit the high notes, so I'm gonna just go up and down and just get them. Because remember like, distressing is supposed to be where it would naturally distress. So that's really the high points of a piece of furniture. And not every single one has to get hit. Not every single one needs to look exactly the same. It's supposed to look like it naturally got old. You don't want big gouge marks, you don't want it to be something crazy, just let your paper kind of hit where it normally hit. Every now and then I'll add something extra. See, and now our spindle's already done. I'm just going to go back, get the sanding off. Lynn invited her daughter. She said she's wanting to do kitchen cabinets. We have a lot of people lately who's doing kitchen cabinets. Dixie Bell is one of the easiest and ways to, and most cost effective ways to update your kitchen. Um, I just had a customer send me a picture. She actually not only did her cabinets, but she um, did her countertops. And they came out awesome. I'm just gonna lay it down. But the flat surface. Dawn asked what kind of sandpaper? This is 220. There's like no brand specific. I just grab whatever is there. Lynn says she gets paint everywhere. <laughs> I know, me too, usually. By the end of the day, forget it. And Kim thinks painting is so relaxing. When she it, finishes a piece, it makes her feel good. Is that strange, she says? No! <laughs> you know what I do? I pet all the furniture to make sure that it's like perfect and in my classes I teach everybody to pet their furniture and I think that's weird but I love it. Sanding is my favorite part. I think if you do a really good job sanding, whether it's sanding to make it soft or sanding to distress, it really makes a difference in it feeling finished and professional. Can you wet distress, Paula asked? You can. Um, I personally just love a good old fashioned sandpaper because I like the feel of it after it's done. It really gives the paint a super, super soft feel. But you absolutely can wet to stress. A lot of people are bringing up the gator hide for outside and for countertops. They're mentioning gator hide. Yes, so gator hide <clears throat> is a water-based sealer. It is Dixie Bell's water-based 
poly acrylic. It is water repellent, water resistant, and it is their strongest, toughest top coat, which is why they named it Gator Hive, just like a Gator's Hive. This is what the jar looks like. This is great for <clears throat> countertops, kitchen cabinets, outdoor pieces, um, the tops of tables, anything that you're going to have to really clean, really scrub, really um, kind of put through the use and the wear, this is your top coat of choice. Now, Dixie Bell does 100% self-cure, so you don't need a top coat, but there's a huge variety they have in their line. Um, they do different things and have different purposes. This is great for all of those purposes. Um, it's a, a nice paint on top coat. You can see it's, it's liquid. Um, Jennifer wants to know how many coats needed to be applied for the gator hide. For, um, we always do like two, maybe three, just to make sure. But very thin, thin, thin coats. Um, in order to keep any paint on top coat, you want to do a thin, thin coat, more thin coats than one thick coat, because then that helps it where your paint lines don't show. So we're going to go over top coats more in the future, but this is a great one for that. Paula wants to know if Gator Hide works only over that brand of paint, of chalk paint. Um, so... I don't personally use any other chalk paint, so I can't really speak on other chalk paint. I don't see personally why it wouldn't. It's just a water-based polyacrylic, so there shouldn't be any issues with other brands. I personally have everything I need with my Dixie Belle tool, ca tool cabinet, as I say. Um, there's nothing really that I don't need that they don't have. Um, but I don't see why it wouldn't work. It's just a top coat. Look, guys, I have paint all over me too and sanding. Isn't it pretty? <laughs> this is how I'm going to walk around town all day. Don't worry, I'll add some more colors by lunchtime. Laura wants to know if you'll be having any classes soon. We um, had been doing monthly classes at our local Elks Club because they have a great big room. July and August got kind of away from us because there's so, so much going on, but we are going to schedule new classes starting back up once a month over there, and it'll be on our Facebook page. This Friday, um, we have Ladies Night Out at the local Bayer Trust Brewing right down the street. We're partnering with some local businesses, and we will be there. Um, we're always here though, so that's the great thing about your local retailers. So ladies, if I'm not your local retailer, go on DixieBellPaints.com, put in your zip code and find your local retailer because unlike ordering online, you can come down to my shop any day of the week and Sarah and I are here and we are ready to help you, we're ready to teach you, we keep extra wood in the back, we will walk you through any step that you're unsure of, you can call us. Um, we're just, we're here for you as a resource to help you really understand and use the product. So please don't feel like you have to wait for a class. Um, just pop in and as long as we have the time, we will certainly uh, get something out to help show you what you need. Laura said, great, she's going to follow you for that. Um, awesome. I have a question. Would, um, would you recommend gator hide for a vanity top what would you use for a top coat in the remaining piece for example sides and legs okay so she's pretty much asking like a top coat i think or would you I just think... do the top oh, or the sides the and legs so um you could certainly i have friends and we've certainly done it where the top is what's mm -hmm. going to get most of the use so we'll put gator hide on the top and then just use um one of the other top coats for the sides and the front or we'll wax the sides and the front and then use gator hide on the top because it's harder and that's what's going to get the most use for a vanity i probably would go ahead and add gator hide just because that's something that is going to get washed a lot girls are 
unfortunately our makeup spills we have perfume we have you know not the cleanest stuff that goes right on top and we're going to use it often so i would definitely at the very least get her at the top of that and lynn wants to know what color blue is the cabinet behind you i think it's pink this cabinet is pure ocean Yes, matches perfectly. <laughs> yeah, I wanted it bright. So, Pure Ocean's a really pretty bright color. So, if there's any other questions, um, we're going to stop at this point today, and then we'll pick up next week at 9.30 in the morning on Tuesday, and we're going to start um, either with a stencil or transfer. I'm just still feeling a stencil on this one only because I'm going to stencil it and then I want to sand our stencil to keep all of this wood grain in. And I want the stencil to kind of look old and funky. But we will definitely do a transfer class, I promise. Um, so next week we're going to do our stencil and we're going to do our top coats with our waxes. So that's next Tuesday at 9.30 here. Make sure you guys go find your local retailers, give their pages a like, give our pages a like, share our video. Um, but now is the time of the day where we take out our super fun prize wheel and Sarah gets to pick someone from okay. the comment section. I am going to pick Jennifer Stone because she liked and shared and she's also very curious. She's interested and she's never used Dixie Bell. Oh, that's a solid choice. So, Jennifer, are you still here with us? Because we're going to give this a spin and see what you win. She just asked a question two seconds ago, so I'm pretty sure she's still on. She asked okay. if we sell stencils. Until we hear back from her, maybe we can answer that question. No, it's fine. We do still we sell stencils. Um, <clears throat> we have about 10 or 12 different stencils that we sell here. So, I'm just going to go ahead and spin it. And then... Yep, she's here. Okay, let's see what you won. Whoa. Um, it's going backwards. You won a 16 ounce glaze, which we haven't talked about in this lesson, but glazes are definitely a fan favorite of mine for adding detailing, and we will get into that at a later um, class, but if you're local, please come on down and you can pick up your glaze. If you're not local, please shoot me a private message with your address and I'll get that shipped out to you. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Until next week, have a great, great, great week. Hope you guys are having a fantastic summer. Bye.